So, you just finished your test of independence, but you may not have realized it. But the last example in the previous video, and the previous page of this handout, was between two groups on deciding whether they liked a new medical procedure, an old medical procedure, or they didn't really have a preference between the two. And these two groups were the doctors and the nurses. Okay, so actually what you just did, in addition to that being a test of independence, is you actually did a test for homogeneity. The test of homogeneity simply asks, do two populations have the same distribution. So now we can rewrite the null and alternative hypothesis from the previous problem and answer the question from the last example. So the null hypothesis asks, or the null hypothesis says, not asks, the distributions between the doctors and nurses, and you are SES. Sorry, that looks a little bit bad. Let me just tighten that up a little bit. The doctors and nurses are the same. Okay, so the null hypothesis is like, oh yeah, they're homogeneous. The distributions between of the doctors and nurses are the same. But, and maybe between, maybe of is a better word, the distribution, not between, but the distributions of the doctors and nurses are the same. That sounds a little better. So the alternative would be the distributions of the doctors and nurses are not the same. So using quotations to basically use the same words as above instead of copying it down again. There you have your null hypothesis, which says they are homogeneous, and then the alternative, which says they are not. So the chi-squared test that you actually did on your calculator for the previous video, and again, I would check out the end of that video just to see how we did that using the calculator, gave us 26.6 as our chi-squared test value. Our p-value was 0.123452. Uh, this is our p-value, which was less than 0.05, which is our alpha. So our conclusion is since P was less than alpha, we have sufficient evidence to reject null hypothesis. And we have the sufficient evidence to basically say that these groups are not the same. They are not the same, they are different. So the work you did for the test of the independence was the same as the test for homogeneity. So the key to seeing the tests of homogeneity is that the matrix will only have two rows. Uh huh. And those two rows, we can do the test for homogeneity between those two rows. So these next examples will be tests for homogeneity and we'll use our calculator to solve it. And what's great about this is that what you have done before with the test for independence only makes this part of the work so much faster and easier. Okay, so here are two examples. Do these groups have the same distribution, the men and women? Do men and women live differently in dorms, apartments, with parents? In, in, of, of Obviously, let's center that this information is for college students. Do college students choose to live in dorms, apartments, with parents or other and honestly, is there a difference between the gender? So here is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is going to assume that they're the same. So the distributions of the male to female, males and females are the same. 
Okay. Then the distributions of the males and females are not the same. So there's your alternative hypothesis. So let's look at our matrix sized based on this data. The matrix size based on the data. Okay, so do we include totals? No, but we don't have any totals here. Do we include the titles? No, so it looks like we have two rows, which makes sense since this is a test for homogeneity, and we have four columns. So the matrix size here is a two by four. Okay, so we have a two by four, and so let's go to our calculator and turn our calculator on give ourselves just a little bit of room to write here okay and now we can see our whole table so let's click second x to the negative one power move over to edit and we want to hit enter here on edit now in the calculator i have i had a two by three for my last example so this would be two enter four enter and so now I type in my data across the first row, 72 enter, 84 enter, 49 enter, and 45 enter. You can see I made a mistake, so I can easily use my arrow keys to go type over that mistake. So now my, I'm sure my first row is fine, 45, 49, 84, and 72. Now my second row, 91, 86, 88, and 35. Okay, I make sure I hit enter. Now I click second and mode to get to a clear screen here, or I could have just went stat and moved over to tests by moving the arrow key to tests. And then I can scroll up from the bottom and find my chi-squared test very quickly. My observed is in A, the expected will be computed in B. I won't need to need that for the problem. And then click on calculate, calculate. And there's my chi-squared test value, 10.1. Three. My p-value is 0 0.0175, or 1.75%, and 3 degrees of freedom. So let's write down this information and then make our conclusion. Our chi-squared test is going to be equal to 10.13. Our degrees of freedom is going to be 1 times 3, which is 3, and we got that by reducing this number by 1, or rows minus 1 minus, times columns minus 1. 1 times 3 is 3. And our p-value was 0 0.0175, which is less than our alpha, which is 0 0.05. And again, if alpha is not given, assume 0 0.05. So since the p-value, since the p-value is less than alpha, we have sufficient evidence. to reject the null hypothesis. Yep, there we go. We have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis says that eh, men and women are the same in their choices of places to live. And we have shown that this data represents a very rare situation and so rare that they can't possibly be the same. Okay, this might be a good time to pause the video and see if you can do this last one uh, together by, your, you know, just the last problem by self. And then see if you did it right after I go over the answers. So hopefully you gave this a try. So what we have is we have um, groups having the same distribution. So it looks like we have three candidates who had a debate. And it looks like there was a before bait, debate debate. Um, um, polling results and then there's an after debate polling result and the null hypothesis is gonna basically said the debate didn't really matter so the null hypothesis states that the distributions the distributions of the before versus after debate is the same. So the debate had no movement on any of the candidates' previous, you know, pre-debate ratings and before after debate ratings. So of course the alternative is to say the distributions of the before and after debate is not the same. All right, so, Let's check our matrix size. We don't have any totals, 
And since we don't have any totals, let's just take a look at our two rows by three columns. So this is a two by three matrix, two by three. And let's uh, click one, okay. Just gotta get it a little bit honed in here so I can get the calculator on the screen, we can see everything. Okay, there's the calculator. I'm gonna hit to a clear screen and then go second matrix or second X inverse. I'm gonna move over to edit and then I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna go two, enter, three, enter. Now I'm gonna type in my numbers, 167, 128, and 135. Now I can see everything here on the screen, which is very nice. No scrolling around, 214, 197, and 225. And I'm gonna double, triple, quadruple check that all six of those numbers are correct. And they are. So now we're gonna click on stat. Now we're gonna move over to the test menu. And then we're gonna scroll up from the bottom because it's a little quicker to get to the chi-squared test. And everything is exactly the way I want it. I just type my observed values into A. Let's, my expected values will be computed in B, but we don't need to worry about that. Just click on calculate. And here we have our very small chi-square test number with a very large p-value. So it looks like, uh, looks like this is not a rare event. And we have two degrees of freedom. So let's write down this critical information. Okay, so this is one times two, because two minus one is one, three minus one is two, so this is two degrees of freedom. The chi-squared test value that we got was 3.26, so there were not a lot of differences between the observed and the expected results here. And the p-value is going to be 0.1959, or 19.59%, which is greater than 0.05, which is my default alpha, since no alpha was given in the problem. Since, since, uh, boy, that doesn't look nice. Ah, there we go. Since the P is greater than the alpha, we do not have sufficient evidence to reject null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis says, oh man, uh, before and after is about the same. And I would have to say that we cannot reject that. So if one of those candidates was hoping hoping for some, for some movement, uh, they didn't get it. So this ends the chi-squared uh, test for homogeneity, which you probably learned in conjunction with the, the test of independence because it's the same process it's just that one does one thing and the other does and one does the other so in our last video to talk about chi squared in this chapter we're just going to put all three types of chi squared tests on the map and just be able to differentiate them very easily in a short video called comparing the chi squared tests which i hope you watch right after this one so thank you again for watching